Hello, dear viewers, and welcome to a new episode of Business Insider and Happy Ramadan. Tonight, we'll be talking about uh, ecosystems, entrepreneurship ecosystems to be more specific, and their role in the creation and growth of new ventures. We'll be doing that with a distinguished guest with us uh, in the studio who will be joining us later. But as always, we begin our episode with a look at our major economic stories making the headlines for this past week. And a cabinet meeting uh, under the uh, command of Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli uh, uh, was held on Wednesday, that's earlier today, at the new capital to discuss a number of uh, political, economic, and social files. The meeting tackled the latest international developments with focus on the repercussions of the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Topping the agenda of the meeting was a number of important ministerial bills and decisions meant to achieve economic and social stability as well as encourage investment. The cabinet also probed the work progress at the different uh, national projects that are being implemented across Egypt, including those uh, to develop villages and rural, er rural areas as part of the Decent Life Presidential Initiative. The ministers uh, also talked about measures taken to implement uh, His Excellency President Assisi's directives for the government to act to secure foodstuffs for citizens and tighten control over the market. The files concerned with upgrading the health, sports, education and transport sectors also figured high in the meeting. And uh, the board of the Egyptian Nuclear and uh, a Radiological Regulatory Authority, the ENRRA, approved uh, the establishment of a third unit of the Adaba nuclear power plants. In a statement on Wednesday, ENRRA said talks were held with representatives from the Nuclear Power Plants Authority, uh, the NPPA, to review and assess the first two units and prepare for the establishment of the third one. The authority also said it was reassured of the safety of the third unit, which will not pose any threat to humans, environment, or property. The authority will follow up on the NPPA efforts to implement the third unit to ensure safety measures I read the statement, adding that this falls within the framework of ongoing efforts to promote the safe use of uh, nuclear technology in various development domains. And the Ministry of Finance and JICA signed on Tuesday the executive agreement for the latter to fund the introduction of the universal health insurance in Egypt with 44 billion yen as a soft loan. Minister of Health and Population Dr. Khaled Abdel Ghaffar stated uh, earlier that the number of citizens enrolled in the universal health insurance systems in Egypt had hit 4.5 million since its launching in 2019. The uh, system is being introduced over phases nationwide so as it had been made available in Poor Saeed, Al Uqsur, Al Ismailiya, South Sinai, Aswan, and Suez. Abdul Afar added that the number of services offered through the system had become 2,941 after adding 90 new ones, including some that are pertaining to psychiatry, dentistry, and dieting, among others. The vast majority of service providers through the system are public hospitals and healthcare establishments, yet there are 38 private entities that joined the system in Poor Saeed and Al Uqsur. And the latest uh, agreement uh, with uh, Japan will help fund the introduction of Egypt's universal health insurance system.
Now, dear viewers, those were the top stories uh, making the economic headlines for this uh, past week. Uh, time now for a short break. And when we come back, uh, we will be watching together a report about our main topic here for tonight, uh, entrepreneurship ecosystems in Egypt uh, and their role in the creation and growth of new ventures. And we'll also be introducing you to our guests here in the studio. So please do not go away. Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. With us now here in the studio is Dr. Mohammed Khalif, and uh, he is an ASRT board member, uh, board member uh, of the Academy for Scientific Research and Technology, and of course he spe specializes in uh, information technology. Dr. Khalif, thank you for joining us, and happy Thanks Ramadan. So Thanks so allow us, Dr. Khalif, and allow us, dear viewers, to watch first a report. Uh, uh, on the topic uh, for tonight, uh, entrepreneurship ecosystems in Egypt and their role in the creation of uh, new ventures. Egypt has launched its latest youth inclusion and employment project titled Ready for Tomorrow with the aim of supporting innovative business ideas and startups by Egyptian youth in the fields of renewable energy, IT, tourism and entertainment. The five-year-long project is the result of cooperation between Plan International, Danish Arab Partnership Program, the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development, the Ministry of Manpower and RUWED 2030. The project aims to directly reach 6,600 young Egyptians of both sexes and provide 4,260 jobs in Cairo, Alexandria and Asyut governorates. Plan International Egypt country director said as working in Egypt for over 40 years now, they renew their vows to support the economic and social empowerment of youth because they are the priority for they not only represent the present of the country, they also represent its future. The project also targets high school graduates and will be implemented by giving without limits association in Asyut, family planning association Association in Alexandria and Life Makers Association in Cairo. Head of ROA 2030, which is under the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development, explained that they aim to transform the youth idea into job opportunities that the country needs in order to surpass all the global crises. ROA 2030 provides legal and marketing consulting for startups and has developed an integrated system of innovation in accordance with Egypt's 2030 vision for sustainable development. Chief advisor at the Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which is funding the Ready for Tomorrow project, stated that their fruitful international collaboration with Egypt dates back to the 1990s. He expressed how happy he was to be part of this project and to enhance young Egyptians' work for and with youth. Thank you very much, Abir Hussain and Rasha Abdel Hamid, for this report back here in the studio with Dr. Mohammed Khalif, ASRT a board member. Um, Dr. Khalif, I guess the logical start would be to ask you about the definition of entrepreneurship uh, ecosystems and what entities uh, make it up. Uh, simply, uh, ecosystem for entrepreneurship is uh, um, a unique mix of uh, different entities working together to encourage and support uh, startups 
uh, in, the, in its larger uh, sense. Um, ecosystem um, could include uh, non-profit organizations, uh, government, uh, uh, private sector, uh, startups, even uh, older startups uh, with, with successful uh, experiences or success stories, venture capital, uh, financing uh, bodies, uh, uh, academia, um, universities, mm. accelerators, mm. incubators, all these entities uh, are considered uh, uh, it's it's uh, or their uh, uh, collaborative effort to support uh, entrepreneurs is considered what we call uh, an ecosystem mm. uh, ecosystem um, is, uh, is something critical to support of uh, startups we all know that uh, startups and small and medium enterprises are the driving force for any economy mm. and uh, we we need to support them with technical uh, support financing support management support uh, marketing support a lot of of things uh, needed uh, for uh, startups to prosper and uh, we, we to have growth uh, of uh, different startups and we have seen uh, international cases with startups uh, investing or attracting a lot of investments in billions of dollars mm. and changing industries mm. and uh, changing uh, business models in industries if, if you are talking about uh, for example in media and uh, entertainment a startup has changed the, uh, uh, this uh, uh, market or this uh, uh, industry uh, in transportation we have also another startup has changed the this industry mm. and we have s s uh, so many examples and each one of these uh, startups are uh, uh, can be considered as a, a, a key pillar for its home country to create jobs to own technology to create value right. uh, that's why it is very important uh, to to look at um, uh, the efforts um, made to support startups uh, in a holistic uh, um, uh, approach, not in isolated with isolated islands and um, uh, different perspective. From government perspect perspective, it is not mm. enough. Mm. Uh, from uh, uh, universities, it is not enough. So, how do you see indeed those efforts here in Egypt, uh, Dr. Khulayf, uh, uh, from the part of the government, the private sector? Uh, the young tech entrepreneurs to try and grow up uh, the uh, startup ecosystem in Egypt. We have uh, several um, um, efforts uh, lately. We have, I, I think, uh, the, uh, the launch of our initiatives. We, we have started in Egypt these initiatives uh, uh, a long time ago, but uh, the real start, I would say, it, it was in uh, 2014. Um, uh, was uh, and we have uh, like more than 40 uh, uh, incubators and accelerators launched by uh, the ASRT, the Academy for Science and Technology uh, and Research. Um, and uh, these inc incubators are targeting to uh, accept ideas from uh, youth and uh, help them to develop these ideas into products uh, that uh, match market needs and uh, they uh, prosper and uh, with their uh, and they fund it we mm. we uh, the, the the government is, is funding such a uh, program this mm. is only one program of several programs the government is uh, is uh, involved uh, in. is involved in we have also uh, teak we have also Ruwada uh, um, uh, we have uh, we have a lot of um, uh, initiatives that uh, uh, are targeting startups, entrepreneurs, and helping them out in uh, producing their uh, um, uh, ideas and making uh, and uh, taking it uh, from the idea stage to uh, the commercial uh, stage. Uh, also, um, uh, when you are you are linking 
all those, uh, mo most of uh, or most of the time uh, startups are linked with technology mm -hmm. so uh, if you are talking about technology you are talking about talents and uh, creating talents and having this uh, uh, talents producing ideas and implementing them etc it's uh, it's a complex uh, uh, task that uh, the government has to intervene uh, to, to have this uh, running that's why uh, the government is supporting universities with uh, uh, what we call the taiko taiko offices it is the technology um, uh, commercialization offices in uh, universities uh, entrepreneurship uh, clubs uh, we are also we have uh, the ministry of communication is providing several initiatives or for to train uh, talents and uh, to uh, graduate uh, uh, people with skills in uh, in the uh, technology like uh, egypt forward a lot of uh, mm. initiatives are there mm. Uh, f uh, from my perspective, um, uh, we have a lot of entities uh, for the go government producing all this uh, uh, thrust for and pushing forward the uh, startups. But on the other hand, we uh, we need now, if we are looking at a holistic uh, point of view or, or uh, of the ecosystem, we need some sort of regulation and integration between uh, these uh, efforts. So we. Um, uh, uh, um, we might uh, look at uh, the, these efforts in the future with more integrated uh, approach, mm -hmm. uh, coordinating uh, efforts between the different uh, uh, entities, and also we need to um, uh, to have uh, measurement. Some, if, if you cannot uh, measure it, you cannot manage it. Right. Uh, that's why uh, we need uh, to measure up, uh, our efforts and how we are doing with uh, our initiatives and then we do some sort of gap analysis and we improve. Th this is a collaborative effort that uh, it, it is not the job of uh, the government only. So, so we need, it is I take it we, me we need more from the private sector? It, it needs some integration between all entities I have uh, mentioned. Mm. Uh, the government, private sector, startups, uh, entrepreneurs, mm. uh, universities, academia, etc. Mm. Uh, that's why uh, uh, the, uh, the name or the experience Expression e ecosystem is very important uh, because it it is uh, comprising of all what we are uh, um, uh, aiming to, and it, it also um, uh, the only way uh, to face the challenges uh, in producing new uh, startups. Uh, and it, it is not also about uh, the number of startups. It is it is about the quality of startups. Mm. If, if we are talking about um, um, four or five or ten startups who can create the difference and make changes uh, to the industries they are in, etc., then we will create uh, um, considerable, significant growth. value yeah. and the growth for our mm. country. And mm. this is the most important: mm. is to link uh, uh, the national priorities mm. and then the national uh, objectives, mm. uh, um, in, uh, especially in areas um, or sectors that needs uh, attention mm. to the startup uh, ecosystem. Right. So we have uh, solutions for our challenges and this this would um, uh, give uh, the uh, ecosystem or the society solutions from the startup ecosystem and uh, on the other hand the society is giving demand more demand to startups and this will uh, this circle will uh, uh, will go f uh, um, uh, forward and uh, uh, prosper these startups and we uh, might uh, see more uh, unicorn or one billion uh, mm. dollars uh, com uh, startup companies uh, in Egypt. So, so what are the challenges, Dr. Khalif, in, in your view, that startups face uh, in Egypt? Uh, uh, maybe the lack of financing or I don't know. I mean, what, what are the challenges? I, th I think the most important uh, uh, challenge is uh, the product market fit. 
mm. what we call the product market fit. Mm. Because uh, uh, most of startups uh, who, who uh, yeah, uh, mo most of startups which uh, which we fail for some uh, reason or another, they have a problem with their uh, product and addressing some needs in the uh, market. If you uh, for the startup, if if they cannot address real needs and solve real problems or challenges facing the uh, society, they will not survive. Mm. And this is the biggest reason for uh, not having um, uh, so many successful uh, startups mm. or I would say uh, unicorn, uh, unicorns in Egypt. So we should focus more on needs than wants. I, th I think the mm. ecosystem Mm. Uh, or the collaborative effort of uh, of the ecosystem, including government and private uh, sector, uh, should focus on national priorities. Yeah. We have in our reform plan three sectors that are uh, considered priorities: uh, agriculture, manufacturing, and uh, uh, digital platforms or uh, ICT uh, in its broad sense. Mm. If we are if we are um, uh, focusing more in the uh, short term on uh, agriculture solutions, mm. uh, using the artificial intelligence, uh, using uh, Internet of Things, uh, cloud computing, etc., to improve agriculture, then uh, we might have an impact on ground uh, uh, for uh, the economy and for startups as well mm. so, because they will find real need and so yeah, that's real a real need because I mean I guess that um, investing in agriculture means the, uh, achieving food surplus or food security exactly. and exporting the uh, the good uh, commodities that we that we have um, yeah. And on the other hand, if yeah. we are talking also about uh, manufacturing, mm. the uh, industry, right. in the yeah. industry, and mm. Egypt has realized the need for mm. having a local, national in, uh, industry manufacturing uh, for uh, Im import replacements mm. and for also exports. Mm. Uh, the currency devaluation is on our side in this uh, regard. Mm. If we uh, are improving our uh, manufacturing facilities, mm. we will be able to export more and then we will uh, be able to bring more uh, uh, US dollars and uh, uh, etc. Um, uh, th this is the local component, the localization. Yes, the localization mm. of the industry and this mm. requires the use of technology, mm. using uh, technology in all its aspects. I'm, no, I'm not talking about the latest technologies, the, mo the most advanced technologies. I'm talking about here uh, the most appropriate technologies right. uh, for our uh, context uh, mm, mm. Uh, appropriate for our uh, labor mm. uh, appropriate uh, um, um, uh, the technology that we can own mm. uh, that we can uh, uh, claim that we have innovated and we are improving mm. this is uh, very important and uh, the third the third part which is the ICT uh, in general and we have achieved a lot uh, of successes in this uh, regard already if we are talking about financial inclusion uh, as part of uh, the ICT in general ICT uh, efforts uh, financial inclusion we have uh, uh, about uh, uh, since uh, 2014 we uh, I think we had um, like 10 million uh, Egyptians who have wallets and uh, bank accounts now we have 40 million 40 yes quadruple the, 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 mm. this is uh, this is the impact of uh, fintech fi mm. financial technologies mm. uh, uh, wallets e-wallets etc mm. and mm. this is uh, um, a true success story mm. of uh, applying uh, the technology for to serve uh, the community and so to serve uh, the economy uh, that's why um, um, it proved very important uh, uh, during the coronavirus pandemic, exactly, for instance. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. And this is, I think, th this is number one uh, challenge that we can capitalize and uh, 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 change it or uh, uh, transform it into an opportunity. Mm. Uh, if we focus on the current needs, uh, then startups will be able to f uh, focus their efforts in certain uh, directions. And then we, uh, we will be able, th in the second step, to redirect all finances to the priority uh, sectors. Mm. And also the third uh, dimension is to redirect all our uh, training, uh, capacity building programs to these uh, sectors. So we have more diverse uh, 
uh, knowledge and we have specialized knowledge in these uh, three sectors. Um, after we have uh, uh, some progress in this uh, uh, program, I would say that this w would be um, uh, a threshold for uh, a startup, uh, uh, what we call a startup nation, mm. where we have mm. a lot of startups producing uh, technology and we are adopting this, uh, uh, these uh, technologies uh, to uh, mm. Egyptian context. This will change the branding do, of Do Egypt. you see us moving there at, at a good pace? We we need the, this integration and the look at uh, the ecosystem yeah. uh, uh, perspective uh, mm. to, uh, in order to move with uh, a base we, uh, we we are aiming. Uh, the efforts we, we have made uh, until now it's fine. We we just need to uh, to have it more linked, more uh, uh, integrated, uh, more towards. Uh, purpose mm. uh, uh, of serving uh, the national uh, yeah, You economy. mentioned the national priorities more yeah. than once and, uh, yeah. and the needs. And I guess uh, of the um, three sectors that you mentioned, two of them, perhaps the agricultural and the industrial, would be linked uh, to uh, one of the sustainable development goals that Egypt is uh, uh, trying to achieve and uh, one where Egypt is playing a leading role in globally and that is fighting global warming or, uh, or exactly. climate change. Yeah. So could you tell us about the, the efforts in, in that regard as far as startups are? Um, during the COP27, we had a national uh, initiative uh, for gathering uh, innovative uh, solutions mm. uh, using digital transformation uh, technologies, artificial intelligence, etc., uh, to provide innovative solutions for uh, cl uh, fighting uh, climate uh, change and sustainability uh, issues and uh, uh, the issues of transformation into uh, the green uh, economy. And we, uh, I, I, I was pleased to be uh, part of uh, the technical committee for uh, uh, this uh, national initiative. And um, um, uh, I was pleased to find a lot of solutions from uh, early startups and from entrepreneurs, a lot of startups uh, that they, they have uh, um, very uh, uh, innovative uh, solutions and promising solutions, I would say, in this uh, regard. I think with uh, uh, funds uh, available for the cl fighting the climate change on, uh, uh, on the global uh, level and with uh, um, Egyptians uh, or Egyptian entrepreneurs, uh, startups, etc., uh, are providing uh, these in innovative solutions and uh, uh, serving the local needs. We have here lo very local needs related to our uh, environment. For example, if we are talking about uh, shores, uh, sea, uh, Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea, we need the robots, etc., to clean uh, water. If we, if you are uh, w uh, talking about waste uh, uh, and f fighting uh, uh, the, the waste in, in in sea, and I have seen these startups there uh, um, uh, developing robots mm -hmm. for this uh, mm -hmm. purpose. Uh, we we also, if we are talking about uh, uh, tourism. Mm. Uh, uh, tourism is critical uh, to Egypt. And yeah, you know, when you mentioned the three sectors, I thought you were going to say that tourism is... Tourism is part is of, uh, of the ICT uh, efforts uh, in, uh, in mm. general, but I would consider this as uh, our quick win. If we uh, redirect our uh, uh, efforts, uh, especially startups, to the tourism sector and we uh, revamp our uh, uh, customer experience, I would say, uh, from uh, booking uh, the uh, hotel online until uh, they uh, come to Egypt and they uh, visit uh, uh, the Grand Museum and they, uh, they have uh, this experience. We, we need uh, to uh, startups to complement uh, uh, this ecosystem of, t of, t of tourism by producing innovative uh, solutions, mobile apps, uh, uh, different experience uh, for uh, our uh, tourists and this would um, uh, immediately uh, translate into more uh, income for, uh, for Egypt. Dr. Khalif, you mentioned uh, earlier the importance of the role of talent. Uh, in uh, entrepreneurship uh, ecosystems. So I wanted to ask you, uh, how do you see the talent that we have here 
uh, in Egypt and do all of those talented uh, uh, youth, I'm sure they're youth mainly, get a chance to, to show what they have? We, ha we have a lot of uh, um, opportunities for youth uh, and uh, we, have, we are witnessing a lot of programs and initiatives related to building capacity in uh, technology, especially uh, the programs provided by Ministry of Communication and, uh, um, uh, technology. Um, uh, and technology. And uh, a lot of uh, ministries are providing these uh, uh, training uh, programs. But on the other hand, uh, Today, I, I, I checked the story uh, in the morning, uh, they, uh, to a study about uh, artificial intelligence could be hitting three million, 300 million uh, jobs in the uh, next uh, decade. And this what do you mean hitting? Hitting, losing, ah. losing. It will uh, cause the uh, loss uh, of 300 million yes, jobs artificial intelligence. globally. Yeah. Yes, artificial intelligence mm. and technology could mm. replace mm. 300 million jobs. Mm. Uh, two-thirds of, uh, mm. of jobs will be uh, somewhat automated. Mm. Uh, a quarter of them could be uh, totally replaced. That's in a span of what? Uh, we are talking about uh, the five uh, to ten years mm. uh, um, mm. uh, ahead of us. Mm. And uh, this um, um, is a challenge. Uh, but 300 million jobs would be what? Would be 10% of the, almost, of the global job market? If we assume that three billion have jobs, or exactly. maybe ten or twenty yes. percent, yes. even more. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, we are talking here about uh, this is a challenge, uh, but it is also an opportunity for uh, for Egyptians. If you are talking about uh, uh, more jobs uh, uh, automated in the Western Hemisphere, uh, more jobs are um, um, uh, there will be more jobs needed uh, in the technology sector, mm. which is. Uh, 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 um, we have 60% uh, of our uh, mm. uh, nation, um, uh, um, uh, uh, including uh, youth. Mm. And then uh, if, if we uh, are qualifying them enough, they, they mm. will be an asset for uh, the Egyptian economy mm. and uh, uh, it will help us to uh, export mm. a lot of uh, um, uh, exports in, uh, in the digital uh, domain and the technology uh, domain uh, in general. That's why I see the advances in technology as, uh, uh, as in our side, mm. um, uh, especially Good to in hear. Egypt. Good yeah, to hear. Yeah. I just checked it, uh, Dr. Yeah. Khalif, and yeah. indeed uh, it was not a bad estimation uh, because um, in December of 2022, that's a few months ago, uh, uh, there was a um, study by um, um, uh, Statista uh, on global yeah. employment figures and there were approximately 3.32 billion. <laughs> so almost, almost yeah. 3 billion, 3.3. Yeah. 3. So 300 million jobs is almost 10% yes. or 9% in this case yeah. of yeah. Global jobs, that's a big number. Yes. So there has to be adaptation. Adaptation yes. is the solution. Yes. Uh, artificial intelligence will change jobs. That's, what, that, that's why we need uh, more uh, attention to uh, technology, more attention to applying technology in our uh, life, uh, and uh, more capacity building programs uh, to uh, qualify our uh, youth uh, to be working in this uh, domain. This but, is critical. Sorry to interrupt again, but will it only be causing a loss of jobs or will it also be creating new jobs? I mean, new jobs should be created, right? The loss of jobs will uh, uh, will create more jobs uh, on the other hand estimates say that we uh, will have uh, more than 85 uh, million mm. uh, jobs mm. uh, um, will be newly created okay. by using uh, technology so we will make up much in, of much of that in the, in the but, but the end result is, is is negative something like five percent of jobs if we don't adapt if we don't adapt mm. yeah okay now uh, dr Khalif, uh, what is the role of uh, the education and awareness, uh, uh, um, um, the important role that uh, education um, uh, institutions must play in raising awareness about the importance of entrepreneurship? 
there is always uh, a gap between the market and the uh, universities and the academia uh, in general. Yeah. And this gap uh, has to be uh, closed by the efforts of the universities and the academia as well as the private uh, sector and their collaboration with the universities. This is very important and we... The measurements that we, you yes, were saying, that's we have why. to measure. Yes, yeah. that's why we, mm. we have to measure. Mm. Uh, um, I, I am I'm sitting on board of several uh, universities working in the uh, computer uh, engineering and uh, etc. And I see uh, more and more uh, attention uh, um, given to the collaboration between the private sector and universities. Mm -hmm. And this is very uh, important uh, to, uh, for universities and academia to touch base uh, what, what is going on in the market, what trends are there, what new technologies are changing uh, industries, what, uh, 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 what skills are needed uh, in the market uh, now, so they can adapt uh, more quickly uh, uh, the, um, um, all uh, the uh, materials, the content, etc. And even uh, produce uh, uh, more uh, programs beyond uh, the formal education like startups, uh, uh, incubators, accelerators. Most of uh, the Egyptian universities now they have incubators for uh, uh, ideas and they support uh, their students to uh, learn more about uh, creating their own idea and producing a prototype and then they uh, take it to uh, help them to take it uh, to the commercial stage. This is very important and uh, very uh, good uh, role. However, I, we need more, uh, uh, more of uh, the international exposure, mm. uh, linking to the uh, global global, mar global market and so global trends. So startups have to look at the global markets as well, the opportunities yes. there, yes. not just the needs of uh, yeah. of the local yeah. market. Uh, I've enjoyed being with you, Dr. Khalif. Uh, unfortunately, dear viewers, uh, that's all the time we have for this episode. On behalf of you, we thank very much. It's Engineer pleasure. Dr. Mohammed Khalif, uh, the um, ASRT board member, that's the Academy Science and Research uh, Technology. It's been a great pleasure. Thanks Thank so you, much. sir. Happy Thanks. Ramadan. Thanks. The viewers, uh, next week, same time, inshallah, is a new episode of Business Insider. Until then, this is Mohammed Abdelhim, and this is goodbye.